these lectures cover the measures of positions. Our main objective is to learn how to determine the quotas and interquotas range of a data set. We are also going to learn how to determine the z-score of a data set and also how to create a boss and whiskey plot. Measures of a position normally will give us a way to see whether a certain data point or value falls in a sample or a distribution. So the measure can tell us whether a value is about the average or whether it's unusually high or low. Also, the measures of position are used for quantitative data that falls on some numerical scale. Sometimes also the measures can be applied to ordinal variables, those variables that have an order such as first, second, third, etc. So what is a fractus? Here we say fractus are numbers that partition or divide an other data set into equal parts. And that will give us the concept of finding the quotas. So the quotas will be the approximately divided and other set, other data set into four equal parts. So we have the first quarter, which is Q1. This will be about one quarter of the data set fall on or below Q1. The second quarter, which is the Q2, will be about one half of the data fall on or below Q2. Normally would be the media, it's the same as media. Now to find the Q2 or Q1, we have to put the data set in order. So if I'm looking for a Q2 is the same as looking for a media, because first we have to sort the data, then we take the middle value. Now Q3 will be about three quarters of the data fall on or below Q3. So let's see an example here. Here we are going to find the quotas of a data set given to us. And this data set consists of 15 employees test score enrolled in CPR training course. Now in this data set of, uh, we need to find the first, second and third quotas. So the first thing we have to do is to put the data in order. That's from, the lowest to the highest ascending order. So that's what we have here, five, seven, nine, 10, up to 37. Now, in order to find a Q2, we divide the data set into half or two halves. So since this data set is 15, we, we are going to have only one middle value, which will be the 15. So we can see that again, finding the Q2 is the same steps as finding the median. Now, in order to find the Q1, we will go to the left side. So here we say the first and third quarters are the medians of the lower and also the upper half of the data set. First, we put the data set in order. Then to find the median will be the middle, middle value of all the data set. Now to the left, we have the lower half. To the right of the 15 or Q2, we have the upper half. So Q1 will be the middle of the lower half and Q3 will be the middle or the media of the upper half. So here we say about one fourth of the employee score 10 or less, about one half score 15 or less, and about three fourth score 18 or less because we have Q3 here, so other 18 or less to the left, which is three quarters of the data set. Next, we are going to find the interquota range. The interquota range normally is the difference between Q1 and Q3. And also the reason why we find the interquota range, it will help us to find the outline data, which we will see soon. So to find the interquota range, it will be Q3 minus Q1. And from our example, Q1 was 10. Q2 was 15, Q3 was 18. So interquota or IQR will be Q3 minus Q1, which will be 18 minus 10, and that will give us eight. So here we can say the test score in the middle portion of the data set vary by at most eight points. 
And that would be the interpretation of IQR or the interquartile range. Next, we learn how to plot the boss and whiskey plot. And the two here is for the exploratory data analysis. And normally to be a visual representation of our Q1, Q2, and Q3. Also the minimum and the maximum value. So in order to plot the boss and whiskey plot, we need five values or five number summary. We need a minimal value in the data set. We need a maximum value in the data set, which we can get directly. Then we need to calculate the Q1, Q2, and Q3. So here, a question is given to us, which you find the five numbers, number summary of the data set. After we find these numbers, the five numbers, again, we can construct the boss and whiskey plot. Uh, so next, we have the Q1, we have the Q2, we have the Q3, which we, again, calculated in our previous example. Then the minimum value in the data set and the maximum value. So here we draw a box above the horizontal scale from Q1 to Q3. And then we draw the vertical line will be the Q2 inside the box always to be a, so Q1 will be the starting of the box. Q3 will be the end of the box. And the line inside the box will be Q2. So let's try this example from our previous example data set the minimal test score was five. The maximum test score was 37. And we already find the Q1, Q2, Q3. Again, to find the Q2, we have to put all the data set in ascending order. We sort it in ascending order. Then we take the middle value. Then to the middle value will be the Q2. Now to find the Q1, we go to the lower side of the middle values, Q2 to the left, the lower. Then we find the middle value there, that will be Q1. Then to find Q3, we go to the upper set, upper side from Q2, the middle value there will be our, again, Q3. So here we plot it. We have the Q1 to be 10, Q3 is 18, Q2 is 15. That always will be a vertical line in the box. Then the minimum value was five. The maximum value was 37. Now any value below five or above 37, we may consider it as a outline. Again, it depends. We'll see an example soon. So yeah, we say about half the scores are between 10 and 18. Just by looking at the length of the right whiskey, we can conclude that 37 is a possible outline because of the range very, you can see that 37 is far from rest of the data set. But again, we can calculate the outline. So percentile and other fractals. Uh, here fractals can be quarters, which means divided in four equal parts, or we may use the decimals. Decimals means 10. So a data set divided into 10 equal parts. Then we have the percentiles. Percentiles means 100. So data set divided into 100 parts. So we get P1 up to P99 or D1 up to D9 for the decimals, 10 equal parts. Uh, normally, the last part we don't mention is, for example, uh, in the quotas, we don't need to say Q4. Q foremost is everything to the left. So normally to be Q1, Q2, and Q3. So example is given to us here. This is a SAT score. And this is again, the rep, this represents the cumulative frequency distribution of his SAT, SAT test score for again, college bound students in a recent year. Here they say, what test score represent the 72nd percentile and how should you interpret this? So we have to look at the data set where we have the 72nd percentile. The percentile is the vertical. From the graph, vertical value is percentile and horizontal is our score. So 72 will represent somewhere around close to 1,700 or something. 
So here we say the 72 percentile correspond to a test score of 1,700. As we can see, 72, our red dotted line, so it's 1,700. This means that 72% of the students had an SAT score of 1,700 or less to the left. Now, if we go right, the percentage will increase. Now, next is how do we find a Z-score and also what is a Z-score? Here we say the Z-score normally represents the number of standard deviation a given value X fall from the mean. So this means to find a Z-score, it will be the value minus the mean divided by the standard deviation. Normally we can use the Z-score to normalize our data set. So example given here in 2007, Forrest Winterker won the best actor Oscar at age 45 for his role in the movie, The Last King of Scotland. Ellen Merrin won the best actress Oscar at the age of 61 for her role in The Queen. Now the mean age of all the best actor winners is 43.7 with a standard deviation of 8.8. .8. Now the mean age of all the best actress winners is 36, with a standard deviation of 11.5. Now the question is, so would you find the Z-score that corresponds to the age for each actor and also the actress? Then we should compare their results. Now here we can be able to find the Z-score because the mean of the data set for the male and the female or the actor and the actress is given to us. The standard deviation of their data set also is given to us. So to find a Z-score for Forrest Winterger, which is the man or the actor, it will be X, which was the value of uh, the age of Forrest Winterger, minus the mean, the average age of all the actors, divided by their standard deviation. So the answer is 0. 1.5. 0 0.15 means the standard deviation above the mean because it's positive. If the answer is negative, it will be below the mean. Now to find the Helen, her age is 61. The mean of the addresses is 36. Their standard deviation data set is 11.5. So here we have 2.17. So this will tell us that the Z-score, because we can see that the Z-score for actress is higher than the Z-score for the actor or for a sweet taker. So here we see the Z-score corresponding to the age of Ellen Merrin is more than two standard deviation from the mean. So it's considered unusual. Now compared to the other best actress winners, she's relative older, whereas the age of Forrest Winterker is slightly higher than the average age of other best actors winners. So we can see that if the Z-score should be zero, then we say that's very good. So the age normally, the age that Forrest Winterker got to uh, reach to win the Oscar is a normal age for most all the previous Oscar winners, actors. But if the Z-score is very high, then we can say that it's not un it's unusual. Now, for Helen, 2.17 kind of is high and is positive, which means most of the actress that won the Oscar, they are more younger than Helen. Helen is unusually older age. Now, if the Z-score should be negative, that would say that, oh, Ellen is very young comparing to other winners of the, uh, the addresses for the Oscar winners. So again, that's the whole concept of inter interpreting the Z. So we normally use the Z-score a lot for, again, normalize our data, et cetera. So in this session, we learn how to determine the quotas of a data set. We also learn how to determine the interquota range of a data set and also how to create a boss and whiskey plot. So again, see you in the next lectures.